Hey everybody, Rob Maurer here, and today we have quite a bit to go through. We've got news from sort of all over the world for Tesla today, so we'll get right into it. And we'll start off in Germany, where we actually have a few stories to go through, the first of which was first reported by the European and has since been covered by a multitude of other publications, which have reported that Tesla has found its latest acquisition. That acquisition is for a German branch of the Canadian automation company, ATS, Automation Tooling Systems, specifically for the branch known as ATW, which ATS on their website describes by saying ATW, quote, has extensive experience overcoming the challenges that battery module and pack assembly and test for electric mobility can present. Having partnered with nearly every major automobile manufacturer internationally, ATW has completed more than 20 battery production lines. With this portfolio of projects, ATW customers have come to expect short lead times and project flexibility that is crucial to remain competitive in the dynamic electric mobility industry. ATW is a trusted name in automation to the world's leading OEMs and tier one suppliers responsible for building the critical components that bring vehicles to life." End quote. So it's not exactly clear if Tesla has done much work with ATW in the past, but ATW does count BMW and Daimler among their current clients. I would expect this situation to be relatively similar to the acquisition of Groman by Tesla a few years back, where they served as a partner and a supplier to other OEMs, but once Tesla acquired them, obviously those relationships ended, with Tesla redirecting their efforts internally. From the reports from the European, it does sound like their orders had dried up in the midst of the coronavirus situation. They report, quote, the company was considered highly profitable. A decline in orders, which is reportedly also due to corona, forced short-time work and ultimately maneuvered the company into the abyss until the deal with Tesla saved from bankruptcy. The Californians, on the other hand, need well-trained engineers and skilled workers in Germany. This created a win-win situation for both sides, end quote. Obviously, Tesla is already far down the path on how they see battery manufacturing and assembly going in the future, so I don't think this is much of an acquisition in terms of technology, but probably more of an acquihire, where Tesla gets an influx of a lot of engineers, local in Germany, which happen to only be about an hour away from Tesla's Groman facility. The European reports that about 210 people are employed in the ATW branch of ATS, and they say that all would keep their jobs post-acquisition. As for the cost to Tesla, the terms of the deal have not been disclosed, but ATS does trade on the Toronto Stock Exchange at a market cap of around a billion and a half dollars. Remember, that's the parent company, which has about 3,800 employees. So ATW's percent of that workforce is about 5%. If you apply that same percentage to portion of market cap, which is obviously a super, super rough way of estimating, that comes out to about 75 million. So there could be an argument for a higher valuation based on these workers being more valuable to the company, or a lower valuation because this branch was apparently close to bankruptcy. Either way you go, I'm guessing this is probably in the ballpark of 50 million to maybe $100 million, and I would imagine there's stock involved in that deal, not just a straight up cash acquisition from Tesla. Overall, for Tesla, a relatively small amount. All right, next let's hop over to India. On Friday, Elon replied to Tesla Club India on Twitter asking for an update on Tesla's entry into the market, and Elon replied, quote, next year for sure, end quote. Following that tweet, we have news today from moneycontrol.com that has reported that the Indian state of Karnataka has proposed Bengaluru, also known as Bangalore, as a destination for a potential Tesla Indian gigafactory. Apparently, conversations have already been held. Gaurav Gupta, who is the principal secretary of Karnataka's Commerce and Industries Development, apparently told the Economic Times that, quote, we have offered Tesla all support to set up a research and development center and the manufacturing unit. Bengaluru has a favorable ecosystem for electric vehicles, and Tesla can leverage on that, end quote. Money Control also says, quote, the potential gigafactory will manufacture Tesla's electric vehicles and batteries, but talks are preliminary and is likely to be, quote unquote, long drawn, Gupta added, end quote. India is a bit of a mixed bag in terms of the automotive market. They're actually the fifth largest auto market by country in the world at about 3 million per year, but most estimates put luxury vehicle sales at around 35,000 to 40,000 units per year, so about 1% of the market there, compared to about 13% in China and 10% in the US, according to businesstoday.in. Still, at lower price points, there is a lot of potential for the market. For example, Toyota sells about 125,000 vehicles per year in India, Honda around 180,000, and just the overall size of the country, there's about 1.4 billion people in India. That's the second largest country, second to China by just a small amount. So thinking of things in decade-long time spans, there's clearly a ton of potential there, though the infrastructure is probably a little bit limiting in terms of actual full-size vehicle sales. 
Perhaps just as interestingly, or even more interestingly, would be the energy business in India. Currently, according to a couple different sources, by country, India is the third largest consumer of energy in the world, and their energy consumption has been rising, their place on that list has been rising. And though India's gap between first and second place China and the US is still pretty large, I would expect that to decline, at least certainly with the US, over time. So plenty of potential there, and obviously with the warm climate of India, they should have a lot of potential for solar energy as well. All that being said, I'm not sure how much potential there is in the short term. I wouldn't expect a gigafactory in India to be outputting, you know, a million or two million vehicles per year right away, like we might expect from Giga Berlin or Giga Texas. But maybe Tesla can start smaller with battery manufacturing. Maybe they just do some portion of the vehicle assembly in India to avoid extremely high import tariffs serve that luxury vehicle market and the energy markets at first, and then once they're ready for something more like the $25,000 Tesla, really start to increase the output in India. Curious to hear people's thoughts on that situation, so let me know in the comments, but let's move on to Indonesia, where MiningWeekly.com is reporting that, quote, Indonesia's government is in early discussions with electric vehicle maker Tesla Inc. about a potential investment in the Southeast Asia country, a major producer of nickel, an official said, end quote. They are citing a quote from a senior official at the Coordinating Ministry for Maritime and Investment, which I think is quite the combo, who has reportedly said that Tesla informally reached out to the Indonesian government about a potential venture, but did not specify what they had in mind, saying, quote, it was still an early discussion and was not detailed yet, and quote, we need further discussion with Tesla, end quote. So anything nickel related would be speculation layered on top of this news. But it's also not a far stretch. Indonesia was the number one producing country of nickel in 2019, with about 800,000 metric tons produced, twice that of the Philippines, which was in second place. We obviously know with Elon's continued comments on nickel that they are watching that supply chain extremely closely, and they are going to do everything they can to help facilitate its growth. So Indonesia is going to be right at the center of that spotlight for Tesla. So of course it makes sense for Tesla to be having some sort of facilitating conversation with the government. That could be a supportive conversation for them to support their own nickel mining companies, or it could be Tesla getting a feel for the situation to see if it might make sense for Tesla to do maybe a joint venture or their own first party operation in Indonesia. All right, let's flip over back to Germany. We have a couple more things to go through there and then a few product updates to end with. Tasmanian.com today is reporting that, quote, a source familiar with the case on condition of anonymity told Tasmanian that as early as March 2021, 4,000 workers are expected to report for duty at the world's most advanced electric vehicle manufacturing plant. The start of production is scheduled for June 2021, which means that during this period, workers will undergo training and participate in the preparation of production facilities, end quote. So things continue to look like they are on track for Giga Berlin for production next year. And if you haven't been following the various YouTubers putting up drone footage of the Giga Berlin build-out, it is really starting to look like a factory, and as that happens and as we get closer and closer to an actual start of production, whatever discount rate the market is applying to Tesla's production and then eventual sales from Gigafactory Berlin drops, or said another way, the certainty increases, and the timing of that revenue and cash flow shifts forward in the model, and that not only impacts the Gigafactory Berlin output in models, but also Giga Texas. If Tesla can achieve a similar timeline in Berlin to what they did in Shanghai, then there's not much of a reason to say that Tesla can't do the same for Austin. Anyway, always good to see that continued progress in Germany. And while we are on the topic, we do have some good news to report in terms of German automotive sales for September. We won't spend much time on this because, as I think you all know, I like to look at global sales. But if we do look at Germany, if we do look at September, Tesla sales were up 24.5% year over year, while other automaker sales were down about 25% year over year. All right, let's move on to some product-related news. First, we have an update from Green on Twitter, who over the weekend shared an update on some of the code behind the interior camera on the Model 3 and presumably on the Model Y. Among other things, some of the code contains phrases like eyes closed, eyes down, head down, looking left, looking right, phone use, etc. So obviously Tesla has done a little bit of experimenting with driver monitoring systems, even though Elon has said in the past, and I'm paraphrasing here, that he doesn't really see a need for them and that full autonomy would be coming soon enough for it not to matter. Though obviously Tesla does a little bit of monitoring through the steering wheel nag system today. As far as I know, the interior camera is not actively being used for any driver monitoring, so I think this code just exists dormantly or for test builds for the time being. 
I think reactions to this would be mixed. I think a lot of people would like it because it makes the driver monitoring process more passive for the actual driver, but others may feel it's a bit more invasive or just prefer the steering wheel tension system. One feature that I'm sure everybody would like that comes in a lot of other vehicles today is bird's eye view. Elon on Friday responded to a tweet from Tesla owners Silicon Valley asking about it, and he said, quote, vector space bird's eye view coming with FSD, end quote. So I would think this would mean with the full self-driving update, the rewrite, and as a part of the full self-driving software package, but I guess that's not entirely clear from the tweet. This is something that people have asked for from Tesla a long time. Again, a lot of other vehicles offer this, though I don't think any of them would be in vector space like what Tesla is saying here, which would presumably look pretty consistent with the current visualization, but hopefully with quite a bit more detail for those low speed situations like parking where you might utilize the bird's eye view. Sticking with Elon's Twitter here for a second, he had an interesting tweet today about the cost for lithium-ion batteries, which was in response to a now-deleted tweet and deleted article from Clean Technica that had mentioned battery prices from $600 per kilowatt hour to $900 per kilowatt hour, which is obviously not anywhere in the ballpark, but it does give us a bit of a hint here because Elon said, quote, This article is wildly incorrect about lithium battery costs by a factor of 5 or more presently and 10x long term, end quote. Why Clean Technica would have posted this, I don't know, but it was a sponsored post from someone on their website. Not that that's a great excuse, but does help make more sense of it. But on those costs, I think it's interesting because Elon is saying 10x long term of the $600 to $900 price range, implying future costs ranging from $60 per kilowatt hour to $90 per kilowatt hour, roughly, which is generally the ballpark that is expected based on the announcements from Tesla's battery day. Remember, Tesla had set a 56% cost reduction in price per kilowatt hour, but sadly, we do not know Tesla's starting price. Most estimates seem to range from around $108 per kilowatt hour at the pack level to $120 per kilowatt hour, implying a potential future price around $50 per kilowatt hour. So while Elon isn't exactly saying that in this tweet, he is saying somewhere relatively close to that and seems to easily confirm prices well below $100 per kilowatt hour in the future. So just a nice little second data point there, I thought. Lastly today is a story on a Model Y quality issue from a new owner on Reddit. This poster, user Indescribables, says that his dad had bought a new Model Y and on the way driving it away from pickup, somehow the glass portion of the roof blew clean off the vehicle. Obviously that represents a very dangerous situation both for the passengers of that vehicle as well as any traffic behind. So to me this is a much more serious quality issue than something like a panel gap which they were told was the result of either a faulty roof seal or that the factory potentially just even forgot to seal the roof on. Obviously a bad look from Tesla here and a dangerous situation was created from it. Personally I have not heard any other reports of a similar issue. I'm sure by now Tesla has their attention on this and is doing everything they can to figure out why it happened and to prevent it from happening again in the future. Other than that, I don't have a ton to say on the topic. I have in the past talked about Model Y quality issues being overemphasized. Again, I do think this is very different than trim alignment or paint issues. This is a dangerous situation, but I also maintain the stance that it's important to think about these things statistically and not overreact to anecdotes or one-off situations. Should the processes be in place for something like this to never happen? Yes, absolutely. But for me personally, unless we hear other stories of this nature, it's not going to impact my investment thoughts on Tesla. And I do also think it's important to recognize the fact that Tesla has created some of the safest vehicles in the world, which have very likely been beneficial in other dangerous situations. So that's where we'll leave it for today. As always, thank you for listening. Don't forget to subscribe and sign up for notifications. Make sure you're following me on Twitter at Tesla Podcast, and I'll see you tomorrow for the Tuesday, October 6th episode of Tesla Daily. Thank you.